As a brief review, amyloid beta plaques have been some of the defining features of Alzheimer's disease ever since its discovery. We know that conditions that increase amyloid beta plaques result in increased risks for developing Alzheimer's disease. So for many years, researchers and pharmaceutical companies have been targeting amyloid beta, but none of them have ever succeeded. No one knows why. There's speculation that amyloid beta plaques are the smoke but not the fire, so to speak. Or perhaps they're just one player in a complicated web of what may turn out to be a group of heterogeneous diseases. Enter Aducanumab. And no, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. The year is 2019. Biogen is testing a monoclonal antibody treatment against amyloid beta. Two trials, Emerge and Engage, are terminated early due to a futility analysis. The end. Uh, except in 2020, Biogen told the FDA that, hey, we did a post hoc analysis, and we actually got positive results in the eMERGE study. So, uh, can you approve our new drug, pretty please? So, what is a post hoc analysis? Normally, during a research project, you start off by asking a question, then you generate a hypothesis, you run an experiment, you gather the data, and then you check whether your hypothesis was true. In a post hoc analysis, you already have the data and then you start asking new questions. There's nothing inherently wrong with this, but it potentially introduces bias. Let's say that my New Year's resolution is to lose weight, and December rolls around, and uh-oh, I've gained a lot of weight this past year. But wait, 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 hold on. I looked over the data again, and it turns out that I went to fewer movie theaters last year, and I ate out at fewer restaurants. So I did make healthy choices in 2020, Choosing a question retrospectively allows me to slice the data in such a way that I can get the answer that I want. And that's not necessarily a good thing, especially if I'm trying to be manipulative. So what did Biogen present to the FDA? Well, there were two trials, and both had high-dose and low-dose arms. One of the trials showed no benefit. And in the other trial, only the high-dose arm showed a 22% relative reduction in the rate of cognitive decline from baseline, or what amounted to a difference of 0.4 on a scale of 18 on the clinical dementia rating scale sum of boxes. Hmm. Let's talk about markers and surrogate endpoints. What you measure in a study has a lot of ramifications on what your conclusions are. For example, I don't know much about cars. Let's say I discover that if I don't use my brakes, my car tends to move faster, right? So. Is it reasonable for me to conclude that removing the brakes from my car will help me to get to Maui sooner? You'd say, no, Matthew, you grossly misunderstand how cars work and what their limitations are. And isn't the human body much more complicated than that? So when you measure something, sometimes you need to take into consideration whether it's actually clinically meaningful. Atorvastatin reduces cholesterol, but do people really care about that? I mean. Cholesterol is something that your patients can't really see or feel, right? They want to know whether atorvastatin will reduce their risk for heart attacks, strokes, and dying. Likewise, do your patients' families really care about amyloid beta plaques or CDR scores? Probably not directly. They want mom's memory to get back to normal. They don't want to send her to a nursing home. They want her to live longer. Does aducanumab accomplish any of these things? Well, we don't really know. Furthermore, removing the brakes from your car may have some consequences. In the case of aducanumab, some of the side effects include brain swelling and bleeding. If you're thinking that aducanumab sounds kind of underwhelming, you're not alone. 10 out of 11 advisors on the FDA's advisory committee didn't think that the evidence presented showed that it was a compelling treatment for Alzheimer's, and the remaining committee member was uncertain. So obviously aducanumab's application was rejected, right? Nope! The FDA approved it! They basically said, hey, this removes amyloid beta, so that's gotta be beneficial, right? Right? Oof. So, Biogen has already announced that they'll be charging $56,000 per year for the treatment, and some have already estimated that Medicare could end up paying more for aducanumab than all other medications combined. And that doesn't even factor in the cost of the expensive imaging that'll be necessary for diagnosis and surveillance for side effects. 
This is one of the most disillusioning aspects of our healthcare system. There are so many cynical people out there who think that doctors are just charlatans trying to profiteer from their illnesses. All my subscribers can attest to the fact that I'm not in this for the money. I would never- This video is proudly sponsored by Bitwarden. Do you forget your passwords all the time? I do. Yeah, it, it's gotten so bad, I, I think I may have dementia. That's why I called my doctor and asked about edu- People become apprehensive when companies cut corners, but this is kind of like cutting laps. Three members of the FDA advisory committee have already resigned due to aducanumab's approval. But people will still want this medication because they're desperate. None of the older Alzheimer's medications work. So there will be tons of folks out there who will say, so you're saying there's a chance, right? Well, we need to try something. And yeah, why not try something? in the context of a well-designed clinical trial, like we do with other medications and other illnesses. Premature approval may slow down the discovery of better medications. Most people don't like to be guinea pigs, so many will opt for the standard of care without realizing that this one hasn't fully proven itself yet. So now you may be saying, okay, wise guy, how would you spend $56,000 per year? Yeah, it's true that we don't have a cure for Alzheimer's, but you could hire a caregiver, you know, so your mom can be cared for at home and doesn't need to be moved into a nursing home. That's pretty valuable to you, right? Don't get me wrong. I would love to be proven wrong about this. We haven't had a new Alzheimer's medication in 18 years. My grandmother died of Alzheimer's. If in 10 years it turns out that aducanumab leads to genuine, clinically significant improvements, then I'll be thrilled to be wrong. Or, maybe I'll conduct a post-talk analysis to show that I was still right. Well, I think that just about covers everything. So, yeah, wake me up in 2030. I... Wait, what? Uh, uh, are you serious?